Welcome back to another virtual science short from the South Florida Science Center and Aquarium. We're back here in my personal lab, and today we're going to be exploring the wonderful world of kitchen chemistry. Today we're going to take a look at what we can do with cabbage juice. We're actually going to get to use it as a pH indicator. If you don't know what that means, you're in for a treat. Alright, so we're going to gather our supplies for our experiment. The first thing that we're going to need is some red cabbage. Now it's important that we use the red cabbage because it has the proper pigments in it to be able to detect different pH solutions. Next thing we're going to need is some water. So it's important that we use boiling water for this to be able to extract those pigments. I'm going to be using a blender and this is just going to help extract those pigments even further and a lot faster, but it's not absolutely necessary. We're going to need a filter to be able to remove the solids from the liquid of our solution. And then we're going to need some different solutions to be able to test. Now I'm going to be using some prepared solutions, but anything you find in your fridge that is a liquid will work just as well. One optional material that we're going to use here is filter paper. So coffee filters will work just fine and we'll cut them into strips to be able to create pH test strips. Now, as we get ready to begin our experiment, it is important that we do have some adult supervision as we will be using the stove, which gets extremely hot, and we're gonna be using a knife to be able to cut our cabbage. So make sure you have all your proper protective equipment on, as well as having some adult supervision to help you with this awesome experiment. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is get our cabbage chopped pretty finely. And while that's going, I've got the water boiling behind me just so it's nice and hot by the time this is ready. We've got our cabbage all chopped up, our water is boiling, and we're ready to go. So we're going to take about two cups of chopped cabbage. Now, mine is not chopped very finely because I am going to use the blender and it's gonna do most of the chopping for me. So I've got two cups here. We're gonna dump that into our blending container. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna add water just until it covers the cabbage. We've got our two cups of cabbage ready to blend. We're just gonna add in enough hot water to cover that cabbage. And as you add this in, you'll notice that your water already starts to change color. It'll give us a nice blue color in there. And that's what we wanna to start to see. I went ahead and used the rest of my cabbage that I already had chopped so as not to waste any. If you're doing this in a smaller batch, that is perfectly fine, but I know we'll be able to use this again at a later date. So we're gonna go ahead and get ready to blend. Now once our cabbage is all blended up, we're going to want to filter out those solids. Be very careful in this step as the liquid will still be hot. So I'm just going to pour it over there and I'm just going to use these tongs to kind of press it in and then remove those solids like so. That way I can pour the rest of the solution in here. So we can see here, I've got my liquid separated from the solids here. And I even have a smaller container and this is going to be to create our test strips. So our test strips are simply our coffee filter cut into about quarter inch wide strips. So this is what one individual one looks like here. And we're just gonna submerge those completely in our liquid solution. And we're gonna let those absorb as we go on to our other experiments. Once they have absorbed fully, we're gonna lay them out to dry here, and then we'll be able to use those to test for pH in a paper form. Now that we've got our indicator solution and our test strips completely ready and dry, we're ready to get testing for our pH. Before we do that, we're gonna learn what pH is. As we can see here on our pH scale, it goes from zero all the way up to 14. Right in the middle is gonna be seven, 
which is a neutral solution, or water. Now the pH scale measures the amount of hydroxyl ions versus the amount of hydrogen ions. So if we take one H and add it to one OH, it gives us two H's and one O, or H2O, as we know, water. All the way down here, on the acidic end of the scale, we're gonna have more hydrogen ions, and down on the basic end of the scale, all the way at the extreme of 14, we're going to have more hydroxyl ions and less hydrogen ions. So down here at the acidic end, we have more hydrogen. Down here at the basic end, we have more hydroxyl. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna test those out with our pH indicator solution. Now what I've prepared here are a couple of solutions using citric acid that I know should be acidic, a neutral solution just using tap water, and basic solutions that are using washing soda. So we're gonna go ahead and get these tested out using our pH indicator. And all it requires is just a couple drops inside of each one. So we'll get those stirred up nicely. And we can see that our acidic solutions give us an awesome pink color. Our neutral solution has that bluish purple color to it, while our basic solutions have a green color to them. Now that we know our indicator solution definitely works, we can go ahead and try out our test strips. So these solutions in these small dishes are the same exact solutions that were inside of our flasks. So we'll go ahead and test our test strips just by dipping them in and seeing if the color matches the solution behind them. Awesome. So we can see those test strips worked just as well as the indicator solution. And in fact, this is a way to stretch out that indicator solution that you have because it uses much less of the solution compared to pouring it into the containers. And that is how you make and use our red cabbage pH indicator. You can absolutely try this at home, just make sure that you have your safety equipment as well as some adult supervision. Also, the solutions that I use back here, you can substitute them out for anything else. Apple juice, grape juice, milk. You can test out the water as well. Remember that our basic solutions are gonna be this green color, while your acidic solutions are gonna be more of a pink color. And right in the middle, we're gonna have our neutral solution, which should be blue or purple in color. I hope you enjoyed this edition of our virtual science shorts from the South Florida Science Center and Aquarium, and I hope to see you next time. Hey everybody, Christian here. Just wanna thank you guys for watching our content. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button down below. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more awesome science experiments coming your way. We wanna thank everyone that has been able to give us a donation through these tough times. These donations are critical in helping us bring science and entertainment into your home. So again, we thank you for that. If you enjoy what we're doing, please consider making a donation. $1, $5, any amount will help us continue our mission to open every mind to science.